Hi, good evening, everyone. Sorry for, for the delay. You know, I, I was in Delhi for many years, so for a long time we used to say, it was always, yeah, Delhi mein to aise hi hota. it was like that, right? But I'm very happy to tell you that Bombay and Delhi are in the same company, so at least we are part of the same country, so we are good. Okay. <laughs> no, no, every, no. Okay, so uh, Aparna really has been, uh, has had a unique experience, okay? She has been heading the or original the Amazon Prime Video since 2016, since really before OTT took off, okay? It really started happening in 2000, 2018. That's when, 17, 18, when Jio had come in, right? And Jio rolled out in 17. So she's been there from the beginning. She's seen it all, right? And one very interesting thing about Amazon is that it, it is a, it's a international company. It has not had a presence in India, but it really hit the ground running. I mean, I'm sure they must have had, uh, you know, shows which didn't work, but the lot of them have worked, okay? They've gone into season two, which is a very good test of whether the shows have worked. And Aparna has seen it all, you know? So uh, you, what you have learned, I mean, I ho hope you one day you'll write a book about it. It'll really be some, some experience. So what, uh, what we're going to discuss today is that, as you know, shows in one language now do get viewed in other languages, okay? They get viewed abroad. Maybe Aparna will tell us a little more about it. So the subject of today's discussion is crafting stories that travel. And actually, if you're, whether you're from the OTT side or even on the brand side, that is something we all want to do. We want to talk to an immediate audience, but you always keep your fingers crossed and hope that you know, it'll go further. Other people will watch it too, okay? So I'm starting off now. This is the background. So basically, we are going to try to understand from Aparna how she and her team arrive at green lighting stories that work, okay? So we'll get started now, okay. So if you go back to 2016 and you look at now, the numbers have increased, obviously, okay? But in the course of the numbers, the kind of people who have come into the OTT fold have also increased, right? They may be less educated, they may be less privileged, they may be from smaller towns, in different languages, etc. So could you just sum up how the, the scene has changed between 2016 and now, and how that has influenced the decisions that you take. Sure. Thank you so much for having me here. And Thanks uh, for being here. I'm also from Delhi. Oh, uh, you're... <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Does. <laughs> Does. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I distinctly remember early days, 2016. Huh. 2016, when I had joined Amazon, we were still working out of a small co-working space, two, three of us, uh, you know, trying to create Earth's most loved uh, video service, uh, not knowing anything, actually. And, uh, you know, I'd come from the world of films, and I was just fascinated with stories, and I just wanted to tell good stories. And I remember at that time going uh, pretty much door to door to door to door to, you know, uh, a lot of the film creators and telling them to create stories for us. And I remember them telling me that, you know, we still have a few films left in us. How dare you ask us to create something for web? Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was getting at that point of time was repurposed film scripts, you know, films that were not getting made. They said, well, you know, you can make this into a series. And, it took a long time to explain to them that, you know, what we really want to do is en be enablers, be really empower them to tell the stories that they really, really want to tell. Uh, I would sit in their offices talking to them, tell them to bring out all the skeletons from their closets. I told them, where are those stories that you felt you'd never be able to make? Let's see those stories. Let's look at those stories. All of us were... All of us were new, working on this new medium. Nobody knew how this beast really operated. Um, you know, most film writers uh, write in their solitary cells in one room, and uh, this one is a, you know, is a different giant. Uh, you know, where you're creating something that will be very uh, high uh, cinematic. Um, immersive kind of a world, uh, something that can go into multiple seasons, and we definitely needed writers' rooms for it. So all of that took a very, very long time. 
to really shift the gaze from the director to the writer, because this was the writer's medium. To set the writer's rooms, uh, you know, at the beginning, uh, it was a challenge. All of it was a challenge, but I'm really glad, you know, from those times to now, uh, we've put out over 50 originals now. Uh, you know, we've worked with both emerging and established creators. Uh, you know, we worked with people who were, who we discovered, uh, you know, who've now gone on to becoming like such big stars. And we worked with stars. And everyone recognizes the potential of OTT, of how you're able to reach the uh, households, not just in India, but, you know, across the world. Uh, you know, you said that you had to uh, move, like, the focus from the director to the writers. writer. Mm -hmm. What, could, what does it in real terms mean? In real terms, what it means is a lot of development. You know, any story that you see on screen actually is in development for almost, you know, 12 to 16 months. Uh, and if it was the director's uh, sway, as it were, mm -hmm. then how would that have worked? I mean, directors, uh, see, I'm, I'm telling you from my experience of having worked in features, you know, most directors have their stories, they get into pre-production, they're doing research, they start talking to the actors, and the scripts, script keeps getting polished. Oh. But here, we wanted to write out every script, every I dotted, every T crossed, a lot of research, a lot of ideation, there was a lot of collaboration with, you know, with uh, the Prime Video team, with my team, the, the whole idea of feedback uh, was new, you know, they were wondering what, what does this mean it's not working and why is this character not working and the, uh, you know, what, uh, what you trigger in episode one may have a repercussion in episode five or, you know, the next season. And so the creation of this immersive world uh, has certain rules. How do you, how do you decide, you know, uh, so you have commissioned it, mm -hmm. you have control over it, yeah. but how do you, how do you determine how far you should go in saying this isn't working? What do you see as your role? Who are you? I mean, are you the viewer? Are you a critic? How do you see yourself when you're reacting to the script? I think I'm the audience first. You know, when somebody comes and starts narrating their script, uh, and if it draws you in and, you know, you sort of forget uh, that you're living, uh, you're, you're in that conference room listening, but you are transported into the universe that they're trying to create, that's it. You know, if the, those characters are resonating with you, if they're talking to you, that's it, you know. The passion of the creator. Sometimes the story is not all there. Okay. But the passion is there. You know, there are glimpses of the world that you can see. And that's enough. And then we feel that we'll, you know, work on it and we'll develop it. Uh, okay. Yeah. And the fact, uh, you know, my original question, but this is very fascinating. <clears throat> the, my original question, which was that when... The fact that the uh, OTT... Uh, kingdom, as it were, has become much larger and all mm -hmm. kinds of people, audiences are there. So one of the questions is that you say, in an earlier conversation, you had said that a story has to be relatable. I mean, one of the things Aparna always says, and she certainly said it to me, is that people have to relate to the story, right? right? And you always, with emphasis, That's have right. to relate to the That's story, right? right? That's so right. The, the thing is, but as the audience becomes more diverse, it becomes larger, how do you decide who will relate to that story? I mean, one, a certain segment, this segment may relate and that segment may not. Right. So how, how do you decide? So, you know, uh, the programming in India was really like, you know, the center of the plate programming. You know, let's go to this one cohort, keep making shows for them. And, you know, it was all about revenues. Hmm. Uh, but India is such a heterogeneous country. It's multilingual, multiplural. plural. And, you know, anything that's my favorite may not be your favorite. Uh, and we are aware of that. But it should be somebody's favorite. You know, that is, that is something that we are certain about. I'll give you an example. You know, when Raj and DK were pitching uh, Family Man to us, uh, very, very early days. And as they were talking about, and they said it's a spy thriller. And, you know, one sort of got into the conference room thinking that, you know, it's going to be about this larger than life, spy wielding guns and, you know, killing and like a killer machine. And, and here was a guy who was going in trains and, you know, going from desk to desk to get his loan approved and, you know, managing his kids who are coming of age. And instantly, you know, I saw my father, uh, you know, I, a middle class man, you know, working... Uh, 
in the government, in Delhi, going in DTC buses, ensuring that the kids have the best education, always, always trying to make the decision between should we take a family holiday or should the children be going for this school trip, you know, what is more important. And instantly, you know, it, it spoke to me and I felt like this is a story that we have to tell. Did that story have that title already, The Family Man? Always. It, it, they, they came with it? They came with the title. The Family Man. They, they came with the title. We, in fact, tried to think of multiple other titles, but somehow it just kept coming back to Family Man. So, you know, now... Well, let me give you a very interesting uh, instance about Farzi, which we recently launched. How many of you have seen Fuzzy, by the way? Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And how many of you have seen The Family Man? Wow. Great. <laughs> so Thank the hands you. which have not, did, were not raised for Fuzzy, see it. It's really fabulous, you know. It's okay. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, please. I'll give you a very interesting uh, anecdote about Fuzzy. So again, you know, when Fuzzy was being uh, pitched to us, uh, it's a world that none of us know, you know, this world of counterfeiting, this world of fakes, like who knew about this world? But the character of Sunny is something that I think we all instantly related to. You know, somebody uh, who's from a certain social strata, you know, who's always wanting to cross the road and go to the other side, the side of the high rises. You know, the guy who's um, full of ambition, uh, young, driven, wanting to do something and thinks he's an artist. And the biggest form of his art is to be able to fake a currency note. That is something that we related to. And about the title, uh, you know, they came with a title called Fakes. And I just felt that if this title is out, even during the process of development, you know, uh, what if people get an inkling into what we are trying to develop, what it gets. So we started calling it Sunny internally, uh, okay. uh, wow. you know. So much so that, uh, you know, when the show was coming out, some of the people from, uh, you know, some of our leaders from uh, US and other territories asked us, but, Sunny is okay, uh, uh, Farsi is okay, but when is Sunny coming out? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> so you're saying that even if you can't relate to the story, you could relate to the story through a character. That's right. And is that often the case? I believe that these characters that we are creating on screen, you know, uh, the incredible amount of time that audiences are spending with these characters, it's sometimes more than your best friends. I mean, Absolutely. and sometimes these characters are perhaps your first experience of knowing that kind of a person. To give you an example, uh, you know, the character of Arjun Mathur in A Maid in Heaven was perhaps the first time that people were interacting with a gay character you know, the, uh, who was absolutely normalized on screen. Uh, the character of Chini in Patal Lok, you know, this was the first encounter that they were having with a transgender character on screen, or a Hathi Ram, you know, or, uh, you know, some of the other characters in FOMO shots, they feel like your friends. Uh, so the amount of time that you're spending with these characters, you know, is sometimes more than you would spend with your family or friends. You know, so <clears throat> we're talking about stories that travel. Is that an important consideration for you? I mean, do you instinctively think, oh, this is a nice story? And, you know, it's in Hindi, but it would work in Tamil Nadu or it would work in Sweden. I mean, does that occur to you now? Never. On the contrary, uh, you know, when the story is pitched to us, we just try to see how rooted it is, how, you know, entrenched it is in our soil, you know. Is it really authentic or is it, like, superficial? In fact, you know, when somebody comes and says that, this story will transcend, I get really worried. Like, how do you know it will? We don't know. But the good thing is that because we are a global service, because we are present in 240 countries and territories, because we have this machinery for, for, glo uh, for a localization, uh, you know, where we are <coughs> subbing and dubbing, uh, you know, Farsi, for, insta uh, for instance, is, in, is available in 37 languages, Seriously? you know, across the, uh, wow. across the world. Uh, you know, and it's once the show is made, and, you know, if it is... If it is relating to you, you feel that these emotions are global, they will relate to everyone. You know, once I was traveling and, uh, you know, I have this sticker of my shows on my laptop and I was working at the, uh, at a, you know, I was at a transit, I was at Dubai and I was working at the uh, uh, airport and this woman walked up to me and she told me, where are you getting these stickers from? Because these are some of my favorite shows and I'd like to get a sticker. And I said, which one of them is your favorite? She said, well, couple, but Made in Heaven is something that's so close to my heart. And we got talking. And much later, I told her that, you know, I was actually involved. And, and I realized that everything that touched me about the show has touched her. So e your emotions are universal, I feel. Yeah, great. 
how do you, <clears throat> uh, when it comes to casting, you know, mm -hmm. in the case of films, I'm sure it's not as clear cut as it seems to be, but there's a sense you need two, three, four, two, three big names, et cetera, et cetera, and that's the way. And then there are people who kind of support their stories, as it mm -hmm. were, right? Uh, but that's not the case in web series, right? How, let's take Farsi as an example of the family man. How did you decide on the cast? Wh what plays in your mind when you're deciding on characters, uh, uh, people to play those characters? Right. See, again, we don't uh, go to the cast first and then sort of reverse engineer. No, of engineer course, of course, of course. It's fully yeah, written yeah. out, and then, and then it's a very collaborative discussion between the creators and us on who we should cast uh, for this character. Okay. And, uh, you know, I remember when we were casting early days for Patal Lok and, and uh, Jaydeep's name came up, Jaydeep right. Pilavat. Uh. A lot of my team members were like, are you sure, uh, you know, are you absolutely sure because, you know, this is one of our early shows. These hoardings are going to be all over the town. You sure about Jaydeep? And I remember saying, we just know this. It has to be him. There was a lot of uh, a disagreement within the team. But thankfully, you know, Amazon, there's this lovely leadership principle called uh, disagree and commit. So once everyone commits, then, they, then you don't go it's back. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there was vehement conversations, but everyone eventually... They said, okay, fine, we are going with your instinct. And I'm so glad because who else could have played that role better than Jaydeep, you know? I, can't, I cannot imagine another Hathiram. And similarly, I cannot imagine another Michael in Farzi or, a, a, you know, Sunny, uh, the yeah. Shahid in, yeah. uh, uh, in, in this latest show. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, we have some three and a half minutes. Would anybody like to ask, uh, does anybody have questions for Aparna? Please, ge uh, gentlemen here. May I request anybody who has questions to please keep the questions short. Identify yourselves and keep the questions short. Hi. Thank you. My name is Mangalam. I work for CNBC TV 18. Uh, just wanted to know, uh, you know, what are the thought processes that go behind uh, the kind of monies that you commit to a production? How do you decide this is what should be uh, used as a production budget for a certain show? I think it all depends on what is the world that you're creating, you know. Uh, it, it really goes back from there. We are always ensuring that the creator's vision is best translated on screen. And then whatever it takes, you know, it's not just money. The, sometimes just the time that it takes. Like I was telling you, some shows have taken almost 16 months in development and then an enormous amount of time to produce it. Uh, yeah. So whatever it takes to enable the creators to translate their vision best on screen. OK, thank you. Anyone else? OK, while we wait for that, could mm -hmm. I? I wanted to ask you that there's this services like Amazon, I mean, your platforms, you have access to all the data you can want about the way people have viewed your show, did, how much of it did they see, what breaks did they take, you know, any, everything. Right. How much does this weigh? How, not way, how much do you uh, dip into this information that you have when you decide on shows? Or do you, so how do you balance instinct and data? That's a great question. Um, data is important, you know, it gives us an idea about uh, the multiple customer cohorts that we have. Uh, what are their taste preferences, our customers' taste preferences? Uh, what is it that, uh, they are consuming at the moment, what are the white spaces, that is what data gives us. But when you're in a room listening to a creator pitch, it's the instinct. It's really the instinct, you know, is the story touching you? Are they able to transport you in that world? If they are, well, that's it. Great, yeah. Wonderful. I, we, we just have one minute more, so if anybody has a question, come, please. Hi. My name is Viren, and I'm from White Rivers Media. Uh, I just wanted to, at the outset, let me just congratulate you on Farzi. I think it's a fantastic show. I think I watched it at a stretch on one, one Saturday. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to understand, uh, is this going to be an increasing trend where we see a lot of celebrities now going to be a part of OTT shows? Because until now, you just quoted Jaydi Palawat. Like, that was a face that became prominent because of the show, right? And because of how Amazon uh, kind of, you know, uh, showcased him basically. But uh, would that diminish the role of the other uh, so-called stage actors 
uh, who were otherwise getting a lot of prominence on OTT shows and now are we going to see increasingly a lot of Bollywood celebrities being part of these shows? Or is this just a one-off? I mean, again, I'm saying that we want to be, we want to stay true to the characters that are written. Uh, currently, there are almost a hundred shows that we have in varying stages of development uh, in, in multiple languages. And I can tell you that at least 50% are absolutely new talent, you know, both in front of camera and behind the camera. Uh, it is, uh, it is such incredible times to be in this business because everybody is, I think, finally getting their due. All kinds of stories are being told. Um, the number of new writers, directors, cinematographers, actors who finally come into fore. We just, we are, we've just started our journey on original movies. We put out two, you know, Amu and Majama, and we're going to be putting out several others. And you'd see the number of new actors, uh, you know, and some delightful actors and talent that you'll see on screen. So, no. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> so, you know what I really enjoyed? I enjoyed, uh, you know, seeing Aparna's face light up when she talks about believing in something. So I really believe you, you know. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, audience. Absolutely second that, Shrikant. What an incredible conversation. Aparna, before you go, here is uh, Shrikant, why don't you present it to Aparna? Let's take a quick shot. That's it. <laughs>